I just did a seminar about uh, raw food gardens anywhere. It was a free webinar. I've, I'm doing free webinars, you know, a few a week. So go to naturespilgrim.com and you can see the schedule and, and when I'm doing them. But it was uh, one of the things I talked about was straw bale beds because straw bale beds to me are, are, are one of the best uh, all around, most versatile permaculture techniques in, in as far as growing things because they're so easy. Anybody can do it. You can even do it like on patios, on concrete. You don't need. You can do it inside if you have enough light. Um, so there's a lot of really great applications uh, as far as microclimating and, and season extension and, and urban growing and stuff like that with straw bale beds. You can see these here. These are just little pods of three bales. And a straw bale bed is so simple that it sounds like a thing that will never work because it seems too simple. But all you have to do is you get your straw bales. What I did was I let them sit out in the rain for a while and let them start to break down a little bit. And then I set them up and then just put about three and a half inches of really good organic composted uh, material on top. That's like finished compost, stuff that you can plant into. And then you just basically put your plants. And a lot of these, I think some of these I started because I was doing some experimentation. So some were started in, in, in trays, but a lot of them were just direct seed. So a lot of these melons and squash were direct seed. And I just, you know spaced them and then put a lot of herbs in between that are coming up and I just I just sowed them like a week ago so um, so they're, they're they're just sprouts but the other thing is melons and squash are really heavy feeders and the great thing about these straw bale beds is when you put the um, the plants in the soil is really just to hold nutrients and water the roots actually get rooted into the straw itself and as that straw breaks down it feeds the plants and it also holds water so you have uh, these sponges that are constantly keeping the plants watered, constantly breaking down, giving them food. So even for heavy feeders spaced relatively close, I mean, you, in a conventional setting, you wouldn't put your squash or melons in this close of a distance with each other. But with this kind of a breakdown, I'm really pushing the envelope to get as much as I can out of it and just experimenting with the potential of these, of these beds. So it's just...